Hi guys, my name is Preben and I'm the COO here at Vision. And today we finally have the pleasure of showing you our brand new flagship competition chassis. And today we'll go through a deep dive of, of the chassis and all of its details. Over the years as a chassis manufacturer, we have received a lot of feedback on our products and we greatly appreciate this feedback because when we decided to make our new product, we pulled up this feedback and then incorporated as much as we could into this new chassis. When we finally had a sketch ready of the chassis, we consolidated a lot of the top shooters in Norway and some of our sponsored shooters to get their feedback on the chassis and then work our way from there. So over the last one and a half years, there has been made a lot of changes, but the, the principle or our idea of the chassis has still stayed the same. First, we'll go through some of the general features of the chassis, and then we'll go through a more of a detailed deep dive, starting off the, at the buttstock and then moving our way forward going through everything possible. The most insane feature of this chassis or the, the largest major upgrade of this chassis is that instead of following the market standard of using 6061 aluminum, we decided to take it a lot of lot steps up and go for 7075 aluminum, which is a much more premium, stronger, stiffer material and that's not just for the big parts here, that's for every single part, from the largest, like the chassis base, to the smallest part, like the magazine latch. We think that this has resulted in one of the, probably the strongest, stiffest and most suitable competition chassis the market has ever seen. Another big feature about this chassis is our choice in screws. The thing we hate the most is getting a, buying a premium shooting accessory equipment and then after the first trip to the range all of the screws are rusty and they just don't look good. Or getting a product that's, that just has blank screws or shiny screws. So because of our resentment of this issue uh, we have decided to go with all stainless steel black oxidized screws here for this chassis, except for I think one screw and that's the grip screw, because this is non-visible and it's still stainless steel, just not black. This might not be something you think about when you first see the chassis, but we promise you, you will be extremely happy about this when the screws on this chassis stay just as nice as you might not be used to with other shooting equipments. The last like, major general feature about this chassis is our choice in uh, surface finish. So all of these chassis, they will come in three different colors. You have a black base color, then you have FDE and one in carbon gray. This might get expanded in the future, but right now, this is the three colors it will come in. But our choice in the surface treatment is uh, Cerakote, but before we have used the like the H series and those coats, and to take this to a new level, we decided to go for the Elite series. This coating can take a lot more beating and just it's a lot more durable. Now that we have gone through some of the general features of the chassis, we'll just start off at the buttstock and work our way through. So this is our new Vision Pro buttstock. We have tried to keep some of the same identity as the old Vision buttstock, but feature-wise, this is a completely new buttstock. The mounting system of the buttstock is still the same. So it's one screw from the back into an adapter block into the chassis base. And yes, it will be compatible with our older midsections and chassis that uses the same mounting system, but this will not be for sale like a, like a standalone product for a while. The butt pad is now a double shot injection molded, which allows us to use a different mounting system for it. It still has the same design, uh, but it's just now it has two screws on the back that locks it into the butt pad assembly. 
This has allowed us to make the butt pad assembly uh, compatible with a lot of other uh, butt pads, like some limb saver models, the KRG butt pads, and probably more, but we haven't tested more out yet. As I mentioned, the butt pad uh, design or the form of it is still the same, but for people that haven't seen it before, we'll just explain the reason behind the design of it. So with this butt pad, it has a very it has a flat contact surface and a very narrow one. This is because of with most of the butt pads on the market, they are kind of like they are curved. So you have to place it in the same position every time to get a good contact with it. But when it is flat, you can almost you can place it anywhere and get the same contact with the butt pad. And the reason for it being so narrow is that you get much better contact with the whole rifle because, because it's much easier to get your shoulder around the bus pad and it just you get a whole different feel with the chassis. Bus pad has adjustability of course uh, it's just adjusted with a quick re quick release button just push in the button and then adjust it so you can adjust it up and down it has it has dedicated uh, places it can lock, but uh, but it is a lot of them. So you should have you should be able to lock it where you want. The upgrade about this one as well is that you have noticeable clicks in the butt pad. So for every click, there is a position you can lock it in. Having a quick adjustable butt pad or quick adjustability on anything can be a very good thing for adjusting things quickly, but it can also be a bad thing if you are shooting a stage and then by some reason an accident happens and you the button gets pushed in and it gets adjusted. So to prevent this from happening, there is one more hole in, uh, a small hole where you just insert a tool and then you can lock a screw and it stays just where you want it and can't be accidentally adjusted. Moving on to the butt pad assembly, we've talked about it a little bit, but just one final. Uh, now that the butt pad is easily removable, you can remove the butt pad and there is two ball head screws that, that makes the noticeable clicks, but it also helps with eliminating the play in the butt pad. So if you for some reason want it tighter, you want it looser, you can just remove the butt pad, tighten those two screws and adjust the play in the butt pad assembly. It works on the wing nut principle, uh, but now the butt pad assembly itself or the bracket for it is made in one piece. This just helps a lot with stiffness and strength uh, and you can have internal weight studs in it. This is, uh, is to uh, allow the user to finely tune the weight and balance of the butt of, of the whole chassis uh, and this is not something we've had before. Uh, speaking about weight, you can also have external weights on the butt stock now. So this is a kit of weights. One goes on the left side there and one on the right side. You can lock these in place and that's, that adds weight to the buttstock as well. So on all of the brackets on the buttstock, uh, they now have guiding rails in them. That's on the brackets and in the pockets. So as you see here, the brackets move in just one axis. It's not possible to, it can't just jump out of the pocket. So it moves in one axis. And that's a major improvement with this bot stock. Uh, in addition to this, in the bottom of the pockets and on the back side of the, of the brackets, you now have uh, the same 45 degree angle. What this helps with is that when you lock it in place, it's forced into the same straight up or the same position, so it locks just in place where you want it and it gets a lot more stiff, so you won't have any wobble in it. So before there was one hole here, but because this is an ambi 
ambidextrous uh, right hand left hand chassis, which we'll get back to in a second. Uh, we made three threaded holes. This is because when you're a left hand shooter, you the normal or the highest position for this wing nut can get in place of your cheek and be very uncomfortable here. So what can, you can do then is just use one of the other holes just after what you need. And as I mentioned, this is a wing nut system. Uh, just tighten, loosen, adjust. Uh, but now we have made the wing nuts in 7075 aluminum as well and added a lot of material to the weak points. This is just to add a lot of strength to the wing nuts and prevent anything from breaking. So now that these are, uh, are aluminum and the brackets are aluminum to prevent any scratching from happening, we added some polycarbonate washers behind the wing nuts. Also, the cheek rest is horizontally adjustable, so back and forth, uh, a little bit over an inch. That's easily adjusted by unlocking the two screws on the bottom or under the cheek rest and just sliding it back and forth. Then lock the screws, just hand tight, and you are good to go. We also have two screws now instead of one, so that eliminates any wobble on the tip of the screws. Now onto the back rider. This is the place you can really see the strength of our angle and guide rail system. Uh, this, the back rider assembly is the only assembly where the bracket and the feature is made in two different parts. Uh, but to counter any weakness from coming out of this, We've added some centering squares on the bracket and the opposite on the back rider to lock it in place and just keep it strong and don't introduce any weakness to it. So as you can see here, I just tighten it a little bit and then you don't have any movement in it. It's as strong as you can get it. Also now the back rider is made longer and straight on the bottom. It's not round on the bottom anymore. That just prevents it from sinking into the pillow and gives you a much more stable position. And to, uh, for those that want to uh, or used to hold around the back rider when shooting prone from a pillow, uh, we have made some nice radiuses around all of the corners just to make it not uncomfortable. So now if you really put pressure on it, you, you don't feel the corners. It's just nice. Also, the positioning of the back rider is now moved lower, so the standard position is straight with the bottom of the buttstock. And the minimum position, this used to be the minimum position on the Vision buttstock, but now the minimum position is much lower, as you can see. This chassis, as with our older vision chassis is of course compatible with folding hinge. We know a lot of you prefer folding hinge, but since we this is designed to be more of a competition chassis, we wouldn't recommend a foreign folding hinge because this introduces one more weak point to the stiffness and rigidity of the chassis. So the only thing when using a folding hinge that we would recommend is to have the folding on the opposite side of the uh, bolt handle. This is because of the design of the chassis, the, fold, or the folding part or where it folds sticks out and it can, depending on where you have the thumb rest or how big your thumb is, uh, that can be very un uncomfortable and hitting your thumb. So we would recommend if having a folding hinge to just twist it and have it fold on the opposite side of where you lay your thumb. The final feature of the buttstock, except for of course the QD lock, that's the same on the forehand if you want any to mount any QD slings. Uh, 
And then the last feature, I'll just have to remove this. The last feature is here, as you can see on the, under the GCrest, there is a machined clearance uh, to allow the user for easy barrel cleaning. So you have from the back of the butt pad to into the barrel, there is clearance. So you can just stick your rod in here and clean the barrel without removing the buttstock or having a folding hinge. So one more thing about the buttstock that I forgot to mention is of course the length of pull adjustability. So you have three different dedicated spots uh, to adjust the length of pull. So this is the longest middle center. Uh, but to, to be allowed to adjust the length of pull more, we also have different lengths on the adapter block. So this is the standard it comes with. With this, the lowest length of pull is about 13 inches and longest 14 inches. And then with, with our shortest adapter block, the shortest length of pull you can get is 12 and a quarter inch. And with our longest adapter block, it's right about 14 and a half inch. That's more of information about that is on the product page. So now that we're finished with the buttstock, just let's move on to the middle section of the chassis base and then forward from there. So the chassis comes with two thumb rests. You get one right and one left. So the thumb rests are adjustable in all of the screw holes here. That's six screw holes. So you have a lot of adjustability positions with the thumb rest. It can also be rotated if you like to have a straight thumb rest or if you like to angle it down. The thumb rest is now made wider and bigger with some grip in it just for it to be a more of a competition thumb rest and give you more contact surface with the thumb. Now onto the grip. This is the, our in-house designed and manufactured grip. This will, this will come with all of our chassis and when we designed this grip, we went through a lot of prototyping and designing to just get the right form. Here we also consolidated a lot of the top shooters and our sponsored shooters to just get the right form of the grip. So we wanted to go with, with a vertical grip, a very big grip to fill in your whole hand. So now we are very happy with how this grip turned out and from what we have tested on the market and everything, this is the only grip that really fills out your hand. With other grips, you get an empty space in the middle of the hand and it just doesn't feel right. And also the, the angle here on the back of the grip just helps give contact surface to your thumb up to the thumb rest. So as you can see, it just, when you lay your hand on, you could just get the right contact everywhere, except from your trigger finger, of course. There is some empty space between the grip and your trigger finger. As I mentioned before, uh, this chassis is ambidextrous right hand, left hand. We really wanted to do this, but we only allowed ourselves to do it if we could make it look nice. So I really believe we managed to make it look nice and beautiful by just, by just having a block that fills in the opposite hole. So here it follows all of the angles and everything, doesn't look out of place and adds a lot of contrast to the chassis. Having a right hand, left hand ambidextrous chassis is really a nice feature because even if you are right hand or left hand, it's good for both. Like left, left hand shooters get, if you want to re resell the chassis, you get 90% more of the market to resell your chassis to. 
And if you are right hand, you also get 10% more market to resell your chassis to. So it's just a really, really nice feature that doesn't look out of place at all with the chassis. Moving on from there, we of course have the trigger guard as we've always had. We have an opening in the trigger guard to access the trigger adjustments very easily. You just put your tool through the hole and adjust your trigger. So you don't have to remove the rifle to adjust your trigger. And as with all of our other chassis, this is wide ambidextrous magazine release. And this wraps around the trigger guard just to get a very easily uh, removable magazine. What's new about this chassis is that we listened to all of the feedback and just over the years as a chassis manufacturer, we have seen that having an adjustable magazine height is very important and just makes life easier. So this Magwell is uh, height adjustable uh, to, especially if you shoot 22s or rimfire, uh, this is very nice. And we've, uh, we've seen with a lot of magazines, there is a lot of difference on the magazine from brand to brand. So with the magazine height adjustment, you can easily adjust your magazine to fit just how you like it. You can have it uh, all the way up, you can have some wobble in it, but you can just adjust it how you want. So with this chassis, there is, you can adjust it so you never feel or get any feeding problems ever again. So to adjust, we will, to adjust the magazine height, uh, we will come out with a video on this, but it's very easy. You just put your magazine in, unlock the locking screw on the inside of the trigger guard, and then uh, tighten or loosen the, the guiding screws uh, until the mag latch catches the lip or the catch lip on the magazine. So as you can see here, this is adjusted how we would want it, and you. You have some side to side, uh, side to side play, but this won't really matter on the feeding. So you don't really have anything. It just it just feels nice. In addition to this, we also wanted. We didn't feel like this was enough because, as you may have noticed, we have listened to all of you and finally managed to make a product with a barricade stop that's all the way as close as we could get it to the magwell or magazine. So when you have a barricade stop like this, uh, often there is an issue when shooting off a pillow that if you shoot off a pillow and have a long magazine and the magazine touches the pillow, it gets, it gets tilted. If it get gets tilted, you get feeding issues. So to prevent this, we also added a magazine length adjustment. This is very easily adjustable as well. Uh, you just remove two locking screws, pull out the plate, adjust four screws, put it back in, test it. With this block or magazine length block, the chassis is compatible with AICS and AW pattern magazines. So now onto probably the biggest feature or the most asked about feature about uh, from our previous chassis, and that's the barricade stop. Now the barricade stop is wide and aggressive, just completely flat on the front with a slight angle and moved as closely to the magazine uh, as you as we possibly could get it. From doing this and just making the chassis as it is, uh, we managed to get a really, really nice uh, balancing point straight out with no weights in the chassis. So this rifle has a 26 inch, almost full profile. It's full profile towards here and then it has a, uh, a slight angle 
to get it to go flush with our compensator that's right over one inch uh, in diameter. You get the balancing point three inches from the barricade stop. So your balance point sits approximately here without any weights in it. The last thing about the middle section of the chassis is of course our accessory mounts. In the future we will make uh, accessories to go on here. We can make everything from two shot holders, magnets, there's a lot of options and this will come in the future. Another general feature about this chassis or major upgrade is that we've added a lot of materials uh, in weak points and two walls to just make the chassis as strong and stiff as possible. So as you can see just with the action here there is a very thick wall. This is because the wall on the forehand is extremely thick uh, just to add a lot of strength but to remove as much flex in the forehand as possible we also extended this thick wall all the way back to where the bolt uh, handle goes in the pocket. So there's really added a lot of materials just to make the chassis stiff as stiff as possible. So the chassis itself, uh, just base chassis, Remington 700 short action, weighs about five and a half pounds. So now that we are finished with the middle section of the chassis, We'll move on to the front and here it's also a lot of new features and upgrades. We'll start off with the M-Lock, of course. We have M-Locks, uh, just so you can mount whatever accessories you might want. Uh, but since we managed to get uh, a much longer uh, forehand now, we now have 11 M-Lock slots. So there is 11 M-Lock slots allowing you to mount as much accessories or weights and just as much as you want. And then of course we have the R full forehand length Arca rail. That's uh, almost a must now on competition chassis. Moving on to the inside of the forehand or more the top and inside. As you can see now there as we've always had we always always had the possibility to mount night vision bridges to the top of the uh, chassis but now we also have one more hole so we have drilled holes and tapped holes this is to further improve the stiffness of the night vision bridges so in the drilled hole you put in pins that locks in the forehand and then locks in the top cover and when you do this you just elim eliminate any play in the night vision bridge and if you're using night vision with your night vision bridge this will stay the same or closer to the same versus only using screws. So on the inside of the forehand there is as mentioned there's added a lot of material and it's made wider uh, to the walls but also on the bottom there's also added a lot of material on the bottom just to strengthen everything up. But probably the coolest and best feature about the forehand is that on the inside of the forehand there are bridges going from one side to another on the bottom. It's, it doesn't come in the way of the barrel but there's bridges that are just it's it adds a lot of strength to the forehand itself. So with a lot of chassis on the market, if you push your forehand like this or press it together, you can feel it flex. But with this forehand, that will never happen. Even though there's walls inside the forehand, we still have the uh, possibility to add internal weights to the forehand. The, our old weights or universal modular weights won't fit in the for this forehand, but we have some new ones that just drops in the pockets and are attached with two screws on the bottom. So you can have five weights on the inside of this forehand and those five weights adds up to two pounds of weight. And then the last feature 
of the inside or top of the forehand is that now instead of just having small bridges you have to stack across the forehand, we now have a full top cover. Firstly, we wanted to make this because we think it looks badass to have a fully enclosed forehand, but also this serves a purpose. So when you, when you have a full length one piece top cover that goes from the front to the back, this actually helps to stiffen up and make the chassis more dead. So what we mean about dead is that it eliminates a lot of vibrations. Even though the base model here, because of material choices, thickness, everything, don't really have a lot of vibrations in it. Uh, but when you add the top cover, it just helps to stiffen up and make it more complete to just remove nearly all vibrations in the chassis. The last thing about before moving on to the bottom of the forehand uh, is that on the front of the chassis we made more room on the bottom than there will be on the top when having a night vision or a uh, full top cover on. This is because we tested a lot of chassis, our old chassis, other chassis by just slamming it down on a pillow and when you do that with most chassis you hear the barrel flex and hit or forehand and barrel flex and hit the bottom of the forehand or the exit of the forehand. So moving on to the bottom of the forehand of course as I mentioned we have a full length arca rail uh, but in addition to this it's also RRS lock compatible. So we have RRS lock holes on from the front to the back. If you use an RRS lock or any RRS uh, equipment, this allows you to use the pin and lock it in place and it stays where you want it to stay. It's just secured in place. In addition to this, the base is of course made wider to give a better balance point of the rifle, it won't tilt as easily. But the biggest upgrade about the bottom of the forehand is of course our new V-lock system. This is just a slot where you can put in what attachments you want. So instead of having M-locks here, uh, we didn't really see the need for M-locks. Uh, and wanted to add something that would give the bottom of the forehand more grip on the pillow. So we made sticky bars. These will come in two different variations. One in aluminium uh, for those that don't want the weight and one's in brass. This, these are in brass but are just in raw brass. They will probably just come in black. Uh, but the, the good feature about the brass ones is that they add weight. But the nice thing about the V-Lock is that in the future we have plans of coming out with a lot of different things you can have here. For example, you can have, or this is six different uh, just blocks you push in, tighten screw and it locks in place. Uh, but instead of having six sticky bars, you can put in uh, uh, an M-lock bar uh, wherever you want and have sticky bars on the rest or you can have nothing uh, that also works and doesn't compromise the balance of the rifle because it just removes in the middle and you still still have the balancing points wide on the side. Uh, but yeah, you can have Harris adapters, M-lock, Picatinny rails, wherever and then you can just you can place it wherever in whatever of these six spots that you would like and just make the rifle just as perfect to your needs that you, as you would want it. So before I forget to mention it, uh, with this chassis also it will be delivered anti-vibration or wedging washers that go uh, between the chassis and the locking screw. What this does is that when you lock or torque your action screws, you torque them to uh, 65 inch pounds. Uh, but then when you are going to 
to uh, loosen the screws again, you have to apply a lot more torque to get them loose. What this allows you to do is just uh, introduce a lot more vibration to the rifle before the uh, locking or action screws uh, gets loose and you have to re-torque uh, them. So we think that this is a really, really important upgrade to this rifle and will help you out just a lot. So that is the end of our deep dive into the Division Vision Pro chassis. Uh, if you have any more questions or just want more information, just you can leave a comment. Comment. You can visit the product page on our webs website visionprc.com. Uh, that will be down in the description. Or you can contact our support team. That email will also be down in the description.